Hey there loves! Welcome back to my channel! This is Jean Castillo and I release weekly videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings in these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In this video, we are gonna tackle the nature variables including their kinds and uses. So if you are interested to learn about this topic, please watch until the end. Without much ado, let's get the ball rolling! First, let us define variables. Bernard 1994 describes a variable as something that can take more than one value which can be words or numbers. Variables can be words like sex, we have male or female, we have occupation, mode of transportation, school, educational attainment, among others. On the other hand, variables can also be expressed in numbers such as age, years in service, family monthly income, etc. Attribute is a word associated with variables. It is defined as the specific value on a variable. For instance, the variable sex can have two attributes, male and female. Other variables can have multiple attributes like gender, girl, boy, or man or woman, gay, bisexual, transgender, lesbian, among others. We also have occupation like teacher, doctor, nurse, accountant, and a lot more. Also, we have broadcast media preferred like newspaper, radio, television, among others. Moreover, some variables can have five attributes like the five-point scale of agreement wherein five is strongly agree, four is agree, three undecided, two disagree, and one strongly disagree. For frequency of use, we have five always, four oftentimes, three sometimes, two rarely, and one never. Additionally, Creswell 2002 defined variables as characteristics or attributes of an individual or an organization that can be measured or observed and that varies among the people or organization being studied. The variables can be classified according to their nature. The first classification is quantitative, otherwise known as numerical, and the other one is qualitative or categorical. Under quantitative, we have discrete and continuous variables. Under qualitative, we have nominal, ordinal, and dichotomous variables. Perhaps you have a question mark on your mind right now. Why are we tackling qualitative variables in practical research too, which is quantitative research? Worry not kids, later on as we go on with the discussion, you will find out more about qualitative variables and why they are included in a quantitative study. Quantitative variables can be expressed in numbers and they are measured or quantified. For this category, we have discrete and continuous. Discrete variables are countable, they have positive values, and they are whole numbers, such as number of siblings, number of residents in Allen, and number of students in the class. These samples are always expressed in positive whole numbers, and they are all countable or nabibilang. So, can we have 3.5 number of siblings? Diba? Di yun possible? We can't have 36.5 number of students in a class. Hindi pwede yun. Hindi pwedeng half lang ang isang student. On one hand, we have continuous variables, which are also referred to as interval. They are measured in ranges, they can be fractions or non-whole numbers and take either a positive or negative value. Like for instance, temperature, high, and weight. Temperature can be 36.8. Height can be 
height 65 and 1 half centimeters. Weight can be 49.5 kilograms. So, these samples can be considered as continuous or interval variables. Moving on to the next classification, we have qualitative variables. These type of variables are not expressed in numbers. Rather, they are descriptions or categories. Dichotomous variables are consisted of two categories, like yes or no question, or sex, male or female, type of school, private or public, etc. Nominal variables represent categories that cannot be ordered in any particular way, such as sex, male or female, organizations or affiliations engaged in, etc. Lastly, we have ordinal variables. These may possess quantitative or qualitative attributes. These refer to categories that can be ordered from greatest to smallest, unlike with nominal variables. Examples are educational attainment, family monthly income, year level, among others. Educational attainment can be ranked according to elementary level, elementary graduate, high school level, high school graduate, college level, college graduate. Further studies, we have units in master's, master's degree holder, doctorate or units in doctorate or doctorate degree holder. Family monthly income can be 4,000 and below, 5,000 to 9,000, 10,000 to 14,000, 15,000 to 19,000, 20,000 to 24,000, and 25,000 and above. Further, variables can be categorized according to their purpose or role. We have independent variables and dependent variables. Independent variables are the ones that cause, influence, or change outcomes. The treatment or intervention and predictor variable that we tackled in the previous discussions so as the profile of the respondents can be considered as independent variables. Dependent variables, in the contrary, rely on the independent variables. They are the outcomes or results of the influence of the independent variables. The progress in the performance of my students who received an intervention or treatment is a dependent variable as well as the criterion variable in a prediction study. It's just easy to differentiate these two types of variables. Ang kailangan nyo lang tandaan ay kapag ang isang variable ay hindi maaring mabago sa research process at siya ang nagdadala ng change or nagkukos ng change or pagbabago sa isang variable, ito ay considered as independent variable. Pero kung ang variable na ito ay magbabago or maimpluwensyahan ng isang variable during the research work, it is considered as dependent variable. Another type of variable is the extraneous variable. This is neither a dependent nor an independent variable. This holds the undesired effect or outcome in an experimental research. Let us go back to our example in my previous discussion on experimental research. But just a quick disclaimer, if you belong to the classes that I am going to mention, please don't take the sample to the core. I don't mean any harm. Example lang po para mas maintindihan ninyo kung ano ang function ng extraneous variables sa experimental research. The control group is ABM-12 Australia and the experimental group is Humes-12 Canada. And the intervention is the video lesson. The independent variable is the video lesson while the dependent variable is the performance of the students in the subject practical research to during the modular distance learning. The Humes-12 Canada receives the intervention. Video lessons were made for them to watch, while the ABM-12 Australia class does not. During the assessment, the control group ABM-12 Australia students have an average score of 30 
and UMS 12 Canada garnered an average score of 40. This may show that the intervention has a positive effect, but we still have to consider factors which could not be manipulated by the researcher that may result to the low average score of the control group, such as the negligence of some students in answering the modules, insufficient time, poor self-management, chores to be done at home, or close ties with the classmates that lead to reliance on the answer of others. All these can be deemed as extraneous variables. Moreover, we have the so-called confounding variable, which is a special type of extraneous variable that the researcher cannot control or manipulate and may threaten the validity of an experimental research. So, ayun na nga, mas naging mataas ang score ng UMS 12 Canada, which is the experimental group, ang group na nabigyan ng intervention or treatment. Watching the video lesson may help the UMS 12 Canada students understand the lessons better, pero hindi rin natin may pagkakaila na maaring mataas lang talaga ang IQ ng mga students sa experimental group kaysa sa controlled group. Kaya, mas naging mataas ang kanilang results. So, ang factor na ito ay pwedeng i-consider na confounding variable. That ends today's lesson. I hope you find this discussion helpful in preparation for the conduct of your quantitative study. If you learned a thing or two from me, Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of our weekly uploads. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye!